Hey everybody, it's George Tromley with Japanese from Zero, and we're gonna be going through Japanese from Zero book four, but we're gonna go back in time a little bit. I'm actually from the future. We're gonna be going back and talking about lesson seven because a question came up on yes, a question came up on the new website from zero.com, and I realized we hadn't made a video talking about this, even though it's in the book. So let's do it. We're gonna be talking about sentences connecting with no de. And at the end of this video, you're gonna understand why. This same phrase, ashita wa ikenai no de, and ashita wa ikenai kara, why they are a little bit different after we go through this. Remember, if you want to learn Japanese, you can boost your Japanese up at fromzero.com. And all of the lessons that we teach in these videos are based on the books. All right, so go ahead and let's look at what no de does. So, reason, you have a reason followed by no de and a result. So, samui no de. We're going to wear a sweater, but why are we wearing the sweater? Because it's cold. With your E adjectives, we're just going to add no day directly and then say the result. Next one. Kimuchi wa karai no de tabemasen. Very basic. Tabemasen. I'm not going to eat. Why? Kimuchi wa karai no de. Because kimchi is spicy, I'm not going to eat it or I don't eat it. Remember that tabemasen and tabemas can be future or just explaining a thing that you do. So, for example, you could say, I don't speak. Hanashimasen. It's just a thing I don't do. I don't speak. No, I don't, I don't do those things. Kyo wa isogashii no de aemasen. Kyo wa isogashii no de Aemasen. What's the reason? I'm busy today. What's the result? I can't see you. Okay. All right. Now let's look at not adjectives and nouns, which tend to follow the same pattern. Although I want to point out in a recent comment, someone said, actually, there are only one type. There's only one adjective type in Japanese. They said that on a video where I talked about the three types of adjective types that I was mentioning, one being e adjectives, the other one being not adjectives, and the one that I call no adjectives, which is just a noun plus no. And he came back with his genius understanding of Japanese, in my opinion, genius. There's only one adjective type.、Uh, then why do they call it e keoshi and na keoshi? And his claim was that na keoshi are just nouns, and they are not. Kire, to be pretty, is not a noun. It is an adjective. So、uh, I think、uh, I shouldn't even say this because it'll invite it more into the comments, but I love it. I love it when people come back with their version of what grammar is supposed to be. Not like I'm the arbiter of grammar and I do make up my own things. For example, is there such a thing as a noun adjective? Or as someone else pointed out, it's a noun adjunct. Which didn't clear it up for me at all. I didn't mean to make a small rant here, but when you guys post these things with all of these highly technical words like adjunct,、uh, it doesn't help the learner. It doesn't help the learner when you're saying things like adverbial this and that. Or let's move on. All right, so now let's look at nouns and these things that don't exist in Japanese, apparently, not adjectives. So it's your noun or your not adjective plus. Na, that you must have the na, even though it's a noun, because the na is really a des there. The des is being converted into a na for some reason. So, ame na no de, uchi ni imas. Ame na no de. You cannot say, ame no de. That's very weird. Ame na no de. Ame na no de, uchi ni imas. Since it's raining, I will stay home. Now, let's point out that no one said it was raining. No one said, Ame ga futteru. No one said that. But we translate it to that because it makes more sense in English. It sounds more natural. Really, what we're saying is because it's rain, I'm going to be in my house. I'm going to stay home. Did I say uchi ni imas or ie ni imas? I do that all the time where I'll look at the kanji and not read the furigana. Sorry about that. Kyo wa kin yobi na no de, ureshi des. Kyo wa kin yobi na no de, ureshi des. You know, for me, I'm not happy about the weekend because stores close earlier and I haven't had like a normal, like weekday type schedule in maybe 20 years. So the weekend is absolutely useless to me 
for the things that I can't do. So I wouldn't actually be happy if it was Friday. I'd be sad. I'm happy because today is Friday. Now I want to point out, we could say, could say that. All right. Now, for some reason, when I said that, it felt weird, probably because when it's said, it would sound more like, instead of, it would be, desnode. someone can comment on that if they feel that I've made a mistake there, because I did say that off the cuff without really thinking about it. All right, moving on. Why are we going to buy a personal computer? Do we buy those anymore? Why are we going to buy a PC? Because I need it. All right, now let's look at verbs in their plain form or what we call the casual form also. So, I'm going to see my friends, so I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if norimasho is a result. It's more of a soft command, right? Let's get on the train since it has arrived. It is the result of the train arriving that you can get on the train, though. But notice that the verbs in both of these sentences are in their informal forms. Please teach me because I don't understand. All right, so now let's test you. Let's give you some English and you give the Japanese. Say it out loud or write it down. Don't trick yourself. Since my stomach hurts, can I go home? Now, while you're thinking about this, I went to Japanese school for, I think, six weeks in Japan. I was in 11th grade, and I got my way into a Japanese school. And they had a judo class. And I was so excited to be in, like, an actual judo class in actual Japan. I had taken some karate before, you know, but it was, like, from a white guy. And it was just cool to be, like, this old judo master was in the class. And actually what really happened, though, was... I start day one. I did some judo, you know, and it was like you got to put your hand here, and this hand goes here. It was very, I felt weird. Judo felt weird because it felt like too planned out. But really, what was the weirdest part is that none of the students, the majority of the students, didn't do the judo. They all had stomach aches. They all said their stomach ached, and they were all sitting on the back wall. And eventually, that's what I did too, because I guess I didn't really care about authentic judo. Onaka ga itai no de. Okay. Now, uh, you'd never want to say an e adjective with a na after it. It's going to sound weird. You wouldn't want to say itai nano de. It's very weird. It's wrong. I don't go to the pool because I can't swim. I mean, you could go to the pool for other reasons, right? You could just be chilling at the beach. Chilling at the pool, I should say. Reading a book. So, you always have to think about this, right? In English, it's, I don't go to the pool. And your brain wants to say, Puru ni ikimasen. Because that's what's first. But remember, the result is always last. This sentence could have been, I can't swim. So, I don't go to the pool. Then your brain would have been like, oh, yeah, I can't swim. Makes sense in the beginning. Yeah, it must be in Japanese. The reason is first, the result. Reason is result. Remember, you can't have a result without a reason. So in Japanese, the reason comes first. So it's not, I don't go to the pool, no de. It's, watashi wa oyoge nai no de. Puru ni ikimasen. Of course, we don't need the watashi wa. Because if I just said this statement out of the blue... They would know I mean I. But maybe we were talking about other friends, talking about going to the pool, Tanaka's going and Kobayashi's going. Well, because I can't swim, I'm not going to go to the pool. Or I 
Don't go to the pool. All right. My boyfriend is good at cooking. So I don't cook slash make anything. Now, I don't have a boyfriend, but my wife is very good at cooking, and this is very true. My boyfriend is good at cooking. Now, remember, there are two ways to say boyfriend. Two ways. And actually, you know, there's a weird thing that happens when you're talking to a Japanese person as a foreigner. They might say the third way for boyfriend. You will find that Japanese people, depending on your Japanese level, will modify their Japanese to make it, quote unquote, more easier for you. I once got a letter. This is back in the day when there wasn't internet and I was a tour guide and I used to get thank you letters from people and they would send photos, physical photos, because there was no internet. And I got a letter once all in katakana because they thought it would help me out because it's for foreign origin words. It was literally like, Joji san, o genki desu ka. It was so hard to read. Hey guys, I forgot to talk about the three ways to say boyfriend. Kare is one way. Kareshi is the other way. Now, kareshi always means boyfriend. Kare, we learned way, way back, can mean he or boyfriend, depending on the context. And the third way that Japanese will sometimes do, if they're talking to a foreigner, is say boyfriendo. Same thing with girlfriend. They might say garfriendo. So just be ready that sometimes Japanese people modify their Japanese to match what they think you'll understand. Okay, now back to the video. My boyfriend is good at cooking. That is the reason why you don't cook. So it's important that you know jōzu is a not adjective or you would say it wrong. Now, I talked about this in my one minute video about the three adjective types, but E adjectives always have an E at the end, not just the sound, an actual hiragana E, whereas na adjectives can have a sound E. An example I always give is kirei, but when it's written out, it's actually almost always kanji. It's pure kanji. And sometimes people get confused because bendi, for example, is B-E-N-R-I. It ends in an I or an E sound, but it is not actually E, it's ri. So you can't consider that an E adjective, okay? So sorry to interrupt again. One more really, really cool thing about not adjectives is that any adjective, and I mean almost any, probably every adjective, if it's in katakana, it means if it came from English, it's going to be a na adjective. Every single one. Sexy, pretty, beautiful. Any of those words, any word that comes from America or any other language that's being used as an adjective will be a na adjective. Thanks. Back to the video. So, jōzu is two kanji together. It's an adjective. Therefore, it is a na adjective. Okay? A noun is not an adjective. The only way we make a noun into an adjective is with no. Okay? And when it does have the no, that's when I consider it an adjective. Now, with that same rule, we could say verbs can be adjectives, right? All Japanese verbs are adjectives. It's the phantom fourth type. So the example we gave a few videos back on directly modifying with verbs was Watashi ga tabeta ringo, the apple that I ate. Tabeta is modifying ringo. It is an adjective in that particular case because it's doing the function of an adjective. All right. Nihongo power up. So let's talk about kara versus node. So this is the question that sparked me realizing that we didn't do this video. It's because, well, what's the difference between kara and node? All right, so let's look at it. Number one, you'll notice in the pattern that we set here that it's da kara for na and nouns, and it's na node. It's da kara and na node, okay? So for example, let's take this same sentence. Ame da kara uchi ni imasu. Since it's raining, I will stay home. And ame na node uchi ni imasu. Since it's raining, I will stay home. Both of them 
mean the same thing. Essentially, there's nothing really different about it in this case. Now, we learned kata in book two, lesson 10. So from a grammar standpoint, it's the same. All right. So here's the key thing. Node is more formal sounding. Now, we talk about this in the current book four, but we actually don't go into depth in the current book four. There's a, a revision going to eventually come out. I don't know. By the time I'm 60, it'll be out like in 10 years. Uh, don't wait for it. I always say, listen, if you're going through the books and you've heard me talk about a revision, I'm telling you, I could be a month away and it would take me two years to get that revision out. It happens all the time. Book four is nowhere near being re-released. So don't wait for it. Just use the current version and let the videos be your, uh, your additional support. All right. All right. So let's, let's talk about this, right? So using kara, we say, wakaranai kara oshiete kudasai, right? So we could have done this with wakaranai no de oshiete kudasai. But for some reason, the kara is going to sound a little bit stronger, okay? Please teach me because I don't understand, right? Wakaranai kara oshiete kudasai. It doesn't mean that it's too strong. It just sounds a little bit stronger. So let's look at this version. Wakaranai no de oshiete kudasai. This sounds a little bit more reserved, okay? It's a little bit more polite, okay? It's a very small nuance difference. And, oops, I guess the English wasn't there. I apologize. Uh, it's a very small nuance difference. It means the same thing. Because I don't understand, please teach me. Now, because of your own personality, you might not speak this way. I don't speak this way. I definitely am a str slightly stronger kara user. My Japanese is definitely rougher than other people because I absolutely don't buy into the you got to be polite all the time. And by the way, there is room for different personality types in Japanese. There is no standard Japanese type. You could easily say, oh, Japanese people are always reserved. They're not. They're definitely, do you watch any Yakuza movies? They're not always reserved. And there's a, let's say that Yakuza level is like the extreme and then you're very weak, you know, bean sprout man he's very much down here there's a range in between okay i'm definitely not yakuza level and i'm definitely not bean sprout man i'm kind of above the middle there where i'm leaning more towards yakuza with the way that i speak i'm not yakuza but i definitely don't say it sounds weak to me so i don't use it and it's okay to find your voice in japanese initially your voice will be wrong and it won't feel right sometimes and you'll have to find your voice, okay? Now, that might mean that if you're too rough, you don't have a lot of friends because they can't handle your roughness. And maybe your voice changes based on what you're trying to do in Japanese. All right. So, let's look at another thing we could say about kara and node. So, kara is kind of subjective. And node is objective, okay? So, for example, let's look at this. Abunai kara koko wo de kudasai. Now, let's imagine... The guy says this to you at a construction site. You're walking down the street, and a man just says to you, Because it's dangerous, don't pass through here. That is a perspective from the man with the hat. He's working at the construction site. It sounds a little bit strong, but it's got his opinion involved. It's a subjective. He knows it's dangerous. But what about this one? This might be what's on the sign. There's a sign and it says something, something, no day. You might see no day more on signs because it's objective. It's just stating this objective thing. Hey, it's dangerous through here. It's not anyone's opinion and it sounds more polite. That does not mean that kara is rude. It just means it has a little bit of a slight stronger nuance to it. Okay. All right, so node is also used when the cause is beyond the control of the speaker, okay? That really shows you that objectiveness of it, right? Netsu ga aru no de kyo wa yasumimasu. Netsu ga aru no de kyo wa yasumimasu. If you have a fever, that's not your fault, right? I have a fever, so I'll take the day off. Ashita wa ouyuki ni naru no de 
明日は大雪になるので車の運転に気をつけてください。So this is maybe a weather forecaster is saying, hey, there's going to be a lot of snow tomorrow. So please be careful on your、uh, driving, right? So since it will snow heavily tomorrow, please be careful when driving. All right, let's do a little bit more. 土曜日に映画に行きませんか This is a very nice way to ask somebody to do something. It's one of those negative ways of asking, but it's nice. Iki masen ka? Won't you go? Won't you go with me to the movies? Why don't we go to the movies on Saturday? Do yo bi ni ega ni iki masen ka? Isogashi no de iki masen. Sounds very polite. Very polite. Isogashi no de iki masen. Okay? Can't go because I'm busy. 仕事があるのでごめんなさい。Ah, sorry. Ah, because I have work. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I have work. Also very polite. Okay? I have to work. Sorry. あなたが好きじゃないから行かない。Now, of course, even without kara, that's very rude. あなたが好きじゃないから行かない。But if you said, Anata ga ski ja nai no de, i k a n a I don't know, it feels colder for some reason. It's like this objectiveness. I don't like you. Therefore, I'm not going. Anata ga ski ja nai kara, i k a n a I don't like you, so I won't go. All right. So, understanding all of that, we've done this deep dive into no de and kara. Let's look at these two tweets that I found. Ashita wa i k e n a i no de, ima ma de, oishi ramen, tsuke men o arigato gozaimashita. Since I'm unable to go tomorrow, thank you for all of the delicious ramen and dipping noodles up until now. Very polite, right? But I looked for the exact same sentence. And found, I added kara to it, okay? So I looked for and saw what would happen. And I'm going to tell you. Out of the 20 or so things that I looked at, everyone but one was all informal. The kata always was informal, and no day always was polite if I was going to sum it up. So let's look at this one. Now notice that it's not, it's not rude what he said at all. This was very common, by the way. Kana type sentences at the end. And I liked this one because I wanted to. Uh, kind of show you what they do when you add kana after these volitionals, these let's do things. So, ashita wa ikenai kara, because I can't go tomorrow, raishu iko kana, I wonder if I should go next week. Iko kana, when you're debating something, nani o shou kana, what should I do? The informal of masho form plus kana is very common. Remember, guys, don't forget to check out fromzero.com. We have this cool study mode, quizzes, new features are being designed right now that I think you're going to love. And also, there's a way to hide Furigana. You can hide your Furigana and hover to get the Furigana when you want it to really boost your Japanese. Boosting your Japanese is all about putting yourself through trials and testing. And that's what study mode does. Study mode hides the English and lets you hover when you think you got it, it hides the Japanese, lets you hover to check your work. Same thing with that Furigana in invisible mode. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you all on the next Japanese from Zero. Bye bye. Jane. <laughs>